The first VR game I ever played was Minecraft using a controller, and it went like this. Ooh, fancy. I'm gonna try walking forward. Oh, I'm dying, help me. And now when I play VR games, it looks like this. I know jumping doesn't make me faster, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't make me slower. VR sickness is what happens when your eyes detect movement that your body doesn't feel. So your brain figures you must have been poisoned, I better purge. And that's why you get that immediate rush of nausea. And because your brain thinks you were poisoned, it's going to keep you feeling that way for many hours after you take the headset off. It's not like motion sickness where you stop the motion and then you feel better. VR sickness is really lasting and it really takes the fun out of a game. So here's some advice about the kind of games you can play or the settings you can use to avoid getting VR sickness to begin with. And afterwards I will tell you how I actually beat VR sickness so that I don't feel it anymore. The first trick should be obvious, and that is to play games that don't actually have motions. Games like this Star Wars Droid Repair Bay are perfect for people who may experience VR sickness, especially if it's their first time in a headset and you want to give them something small to play. You never step away from the location that you start in. Everything is within arm's reach, and there's really no reason to, to go anywhere. They haven't even programmed that into the game. Another great example would be Job Simulator, or any game from Alchemy Labs, such as Vacation Simulator or Rick and Morty Virtual Recality. In those games, they're designed so that everything is within arm's reach. You can teleport a little bit, but there's no real motion. The second trick is to play games where you propel yourself using your hands instead. Games like The Climb 2, where you only use your hands to grab onto each piece and your body only moves when you drag your arm towards yourself. Or Echo Arena, where you're floating or using your hands to move yourself off walls and objects. The third trick is for people who don't want to limit themselves to only standing games. They want to play something more immersive such as Half-Life Alex or Skyrim VR. Many games will have specific settings for VR sickness. The most obvious is teleport. Your brain doesn't like sliding across the ground, but it does not mind teleporting. The same is true for snap turning. You might get nausea turning left and right using the joysticks. So using the snap turning rather than a gradual change, you literally snap in 45 degree angles to turn. And for people who still want normal movements in their game, my fourth trick is to find the FOB settings. This is going to make a black border around your vision whenever you move or turn, and that's going to help with sickness because you don't see quite as much of the world whizzing past you. Now those four tips are for people who get VR sickness and are not trying to beat it. They're just trying to cope with it, or they're trying to negate it as much as they can. But if you're like me and you wanted to beat VR sickness completely so you could play a game exactly how it was intended, here's how I did it. Quick disclaimer, this is not based on science, it's purely anecdotal, and I can't guarantee it's going to work for everybody, but it did work for me. Now it may have been completely placebo, but the first thing I did was anti-nausea medicines, like things with ginger. I'm told that it shouldn't help with VR sickness, but it absolutely did help with me. So either I just really wanted it to work, or it actually did do something to help me. After that I found space flight simulators to be absolutely perfect. In games like No Man's Sky and Elite Dangerous, you can find a big open area of space and just float. You know, you're able to move the controller as slow or fast as you want, and you're not having trees whiz past you, it's stars that are really far away, and your brain is a lot more okay with it. And I think being in the spaceship, your brain says, oh, you're not walking, you're flying, and that's fine. And unfortunately, I don't have any big secret ways to beat VR sickness. The way I did it was every day for 15 minutes, for about two weeks, I would jump into a game and slide around. I would put my feet on the ground as if I was on a snowboard, and then I would tell my brain that I'm not walking through the ground, I'm literally sliding. Because remember that VR sickness is your brain misinterpreting things. So you are able to convince your brain that you're on a skateboard and not been poisoned. The ginger, flight simulators, and lying about skateboards might not work for everybody, but I did go from immediate nausea when I played these games to being able to do this. Will I die if I land in the water? Oops. Hopefully some of these tips helped you cope with your nausea, or better yet, solved it altogether. I definitely think it's worth it, however it is not a comfortable experience in the meantime. Please put in the comments if anyone has tried something else that works, and I will gladly pin whatever the best advice is that I haven't given in this video. And if you could give a like, that would be greatly appreciated. This is Michael at Smashed Reality, thanks for watching.